Hello everyone, welcome back to Out of Spec Guide. My name is Max and today I want to tell you about a big, big tip that can save you a lot of your range with your electric car in winter times when it's cold weather and typically you lose a lot of your driving range. If you have any way of plugging in at home, keep watching this video because I'm going to tell you about what's called battery conditioning or charge scheduling. It's basically a way to uh, take a big range impact out of the way for winter and start with a warm battery because when cars have to heat their batteries directly uh, from themselves, well, it consumes a lot of energy, a lot of what could be great driving range. So. I'm going to tell you how you can get around that and basically every electric car and do it in a real world scenario because today I'm going from cold Boulder, Colorado to even colder Keystone Resort. It is a uh, windy, not overly long, but you know, windy, cold route uh, with lots of elevation. So I'm, you know, trying to eke out as much range as I can. Uh, so hopefully this step will help me a lot. So let me get in the car, get driving and then tell you about why this is such a great thing to do. Okay, so I've just about left the house. I'm a few miles from home. I'm on my journey, but I just wanted to pull over to quickly explain to you what's going on, how this preconditioning works. And also you can see uh, on my car, right, 96% battery. I didn't quite fill up to 100% before I left the garage, but I've set my charge limit in my car to its maximum 100% today. For most electric cars, I made another video about this, you probably don't want to do that because they recommend you set it to 80 to 90% on a daily basis. However, for occasional trips, long journeys, you will of course course, want to start with as much battery as possible. So that's what I've done for today. Not an everyday thing, um, unless you have, let's say, a rear-wheel drive Tesla Model 3, but we don't have to get into those nuances today. Anyhow, you can see 150 miles of range at an almost full battery. That's pretty bad. My car, this Polestar 2, typically is able to get about 220 miles of driving range. So you can see drastic reduction in winter. I, in case of my car, have my range set to be projected based off how much it's consuming. So because it's cold weather, I'm still a lot less efficient um, than I would be in warm weather. However, I think I should be helped out a lot by having a warm battery. And I'll show you a screenshot here, but there's typically a message in my car that says if the battery's cold, you may have limited performance. Acceleration is limited. The regenerative braking function where your car slows down and charges its battery may be limited. This is because the battery basically doesn't want to very quickly charge or discharge itself because it's really cold but you can get around that with battery conditioning. So you can see I've got a long journey ahead of me and I'm gonna arrive with a little bit less than half battery um, on long this 80 mile route with lots of elevation, lots of wind, all of that. Uh, but the battery conditioning part of this video, which is what's really relevant here, is typically found in your car's infotainment, usually under like under a charge setting, battery setting, uh, departure time, charge schedule, something more or less along those lines. So if I go into charge here, here I have my charge limit. Again, I've made a video on this separate topic, but today we're going with 100%, but here's what's crucial to understand for today, my charge schedule, which I've set. So when I plug in my car to my home charging station, what I do is have it scheduled to start at 11.30 p.m. and stop at 8.10. So the start part is down to, um, Basically, let's say you have your appliances and your things running in the evening and maybe your house has a limited amperage breaker and you don't want to trip it. Well, you can avoid that by having your car start charging later, typically when everything's powered down, the dishwasher's not running, everyone's in bed. Also, in many cases, your power company may be billing you a much cheaper rate in the uh, in the middle of the night when no one's using energy uh, than during the day, what's called peak hours. So basically you can take advantage of charging your car on the cheap by starting it later. Uh, and then the stop charging function is what's important here. That is what's telling the car, here's when you're leaving, whether it be for your commute for work or you're going to ski, whatever it is, your stop charging or your departure time tells your car, okay, at this point, uh, Joe Schmo is going to unplug his car or, or Jane is going to unplug her car and she is going to want a warm battery. So the car will have its battery all warmed up for you by then and that's going to help you a lot. Having a warm battery off the bat not only gives you the full beams of acceleration and maybe full regenerative braking if you're not charging to 100%, you know, all of the normal things you'd expect your car uh, to perform, like that's met when your battery is warm. Not only that, your car is just more efficient. Uh, the biggest hurdle just in the initial 
uh, stages of warming your car's battery is that initial stage. Once the battery's heated, well, it's hundreds to over a thousand pounds of metal and uh, it, it's gonna have a lot of capacity to stay heated, assuming you keep driving and you don't stop your car and leave it parked for several hours and then start it again, in which case you actually do have to burn all that energy again. But by having your battery heated from the wall before you leave home, you're taking that energy from the grid instead of drawing it directly from the car's battery heat itself. Why does your car need a warm battery? That's just down to chemistry and how batteries like to perform. They have an ideal operating range and your car is smart and it wants the battery to stay there. If your battery wasn't ideally warm, it uh, wouldn't charge or discharge very well, which would mean basically that you couldn't drive very well. Your car, if you stopped at a DC fast charger, would charge crippingly, cripplingly slowly um, it would be unsafe. So the car, of course, knows this and to preserve its battery health, to keep operating normally, it wants the warm battery, but you're way better off starting with that battery warm with this conditioning routine. One more thing else before I stop blabbering and update you more on my journey is uh, I don't want to confuse this with what's called cabin conditioning. So cabin conditioning is something you can also typically do in cars, typically through their like connected app uh, where you can like warm, you know, your seats and your defrosters and your forced air ahead of time, uh, like on a 30 minute time timer. It's not unique to electric cars. Some other cars have had this kind of function for a while. Um, that's all well and good. And don't get me wrong, that uses energy. So if you're plugged in and you can warm the cabin ahead of time, that's great. Doesn't use nearly as much energy as warming, again, those hundreds to over a thousand pound of uh, battery minerals that you have in your car. Uh, heating the cabin ahead of time is great. It can be comfortable. Uh, you can do it off battery power or on the wall as you so wish, but don't confuse cabin conditioning with charge scheduling or battery conditioning. Typically the battery conditioning function is related to that charge schedule and not your cabin. So if you warm your cabin, you're not heating your battery. However, because I mentioned that connected app, the ability typically to warm your cabin ahead of time, if you've done that in your car, if your car has a companion app, like in the case of my Polestar, it has one, Tesla has one, Mercedes, Audi, Chevy, most brands do, uh, Hyundai as well. If you have that uh, linked up with your car, you can typically adjust your charge schedule through the app. I'll show some footage here of me doing that in my Polestar, where that's convenient because maybe you don't want to monkey around in your car screen. You've already plugged it in. You're already at home. You don't want to go back out to your car. You can do that from the convenience of the app. Just don't get it confused. Cabin conditioning, battery conditioning, not the same thing. Oh, anyhow, I'm sorry I blabber on so much, but I'm going to keep driving. I'll update you on how the journey's going. And hopefully, because I've started off with this warm battery, my car is uh, less abysmally inefficient than usual. Well, 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 it is I-70 and traffic, as is to be expected, has happened on it. I just passed the Eisenhower Tunnel. And when I started, uh, when I joined you in this video at the beginning in Boulder, it was 28 degrees. Here I am in the mountains. It is 7 degrees. So it's much colder. And I have to get into the topic of uh, the difference in efficiency you get in traffic uh, in an electric car in the cold. It's actually very interesting because normally in an electric car, you're more efficient when you're going slower in traffic because you're not going as high as speed. You're not uh, driving the motors as much. However, in the cold, you kind of want to keep driving because that's going to keep you uh, generating some heat. However, when you are stuck in the cold, especially for like 20, 30 minutes in significant traffic, that can actually ruin your efficiency because you're not going anywhere and you still have to keep the cabin and crucially the battery heated. So uh, my efficiency, I think is gonna drop a little bit as I am kind of stalled out here. It's only for about 10 minutes. So luckily today, it's still being a weekday, it's lower traffic. Uh, but keep in mind in those situations where you're in traffic for 30, 40 minutes, your efficiency will tank. It's not to suggest that you're gonna run out of battery necessarily, just sitting around because uh, it's still not that much energy compared to driving but it is going to diminish your driving range the more you have to uh, basically you know give up all the momentum you had of continuing to drive along and just stay on the cold the worst of all would be having to stop and make a bunch of errands uh, let's say you you know stopped your car parked it in the cold outside went and got groceries for an hour or two or did that several times over your car would have to reheat itself up from the battery all those times without that nice preconditioning available. Uh, so try to avoid that if possible, or if you do have to park for a long time and you can't charge your car and it's cold, try to use indoor 
uh, garage parking or anywhere that's heated if you have access to that. Uh, an electric car, it's especially important because they generate so much less um, excess heat than an internal combustion car does because typically electric cars being more efficient just means there's less heat to go around. That's your basic physics lessons with Max. Anyhow, let me get back to focusing on traffic here. We are moving along at a crawl and of course there are people in the right lane trying to zipper merge at the last minute as people tend to do on I-70. So let me contend with that and I'll join you when I'm actually at the resort. Okay, I made it to the River Run gondola parking lot here, and uh, my efficiency is actually better than I expected. 48 kilowatt hours, 100 miles. For those of you who don't speak nerd, that's actually decent. Way lower than my car normally gets, but considering I was going uphill in very cold uh, weather, that's decent. So I'm going to go ski, and then I'll update you on my situation as I turn around to head back home. I will need to hit up a DC fast charger, and that's what I'm going to talk about preconditioning for chargers ahead of time, because my battery is going to get cold all over again, and I'll want a warm battery uh, to get to the charger and be able to charge at a speed that is nice and not have to be stuck there an extra half an hour. So the things you've got to think about with an electric vehicle, I'll update you as I... Um, go on my way back, but for now, I'm gonna go skiing because it took long enough to get here with traffic. Uh, it's about time. All right, I'm done skiing and I'm back in my car. It lost uh, one or 2%, I guess, just keeping itself warm or it could be the battery management system re-guessing, but I lost a marginal amount of battery while I was out for a few hours skiing. Now I gotta head home. I do have to stop at a DC fast charger. So I'm choosing a, a charge point express unit I found in Idaho Springs. Um, so I'm gonna try navigating there, add that to my car. Okay, slight problem that you may come across. When they install new chargers, they're not always added to Google Maps instantly or whatever your car's navigation may be. So in this case, I'm going to the charger. I put in the address that I found from ChargePoint, PlugShare, whatever you might be using. I know these are DC fast chargers. I know they're available and yet the car doesn't recognize they're there. I've tried to put in uh, the point uh, that it's charging. It just doesn't know. So I'm gonna arrive there with 19% anyways. Normally I would, if I was preconditioning the car, it would uh, suck up a little more juice to warm the battery but i'm gonna try to drive aggressively use regen heat up the battery best as i can manually on the way there so that i'm not stuck with a slow charge speed i think these chargers are capable of 200 kilowatts which is more than my car can handle so hopefully i can realize uh close to my car's maximum speed and the battery is not too cold because again you want your battery warm not just for driving efficiently not just for having full acceleration but also to be able to charge quickly at a dc fast charge Okay, found the chargers. They're actually 62 kilowatt speed uh, by design. These are some cool integrated uh, fast chargers. 62 kilowatts, not very fast charging speed. Perfectly fine, I guess, if you're going to go in Starbucks and get a drink, which I might do to, uh, today, tonight. But um, yeah, that's been an update on my day. Hopefully you learned something from this. Uh, one, start off with battery conditioning at home if you can on uh, cold days, whether you're commuting to work or taking a long journey. And two, if you are taking a long journey, and your car has a form of battery preconditioning or built-in navigation, select that charger in your car's navigation so the battery is also warm so it can charge quickly. To summarize all of this, well, a warm battery in an electric car is a happy battery. It's gonna drive more efficiently. You're gonna be able to use all of your acceleration, all of your regenerative braking. You're gonna be able to charge at your ideal speed. In my case, I'm kind of bottlenecked here because the charger is pretty slow, but if I pulled up to a 150 kilowatt charger with a really a dead cold battery that let's say like I you know hadn't driven much a uh, car's battery hadn't warmed up then I would be uh, charging at a crippled speed it would take me a lot longer preconditioning matters both for getting started with your day with um, you know when you're on your home charger and for on the road thanks for watching this video uh, from at the spec guide I've been Max let me know your other questions about electric cars and the cold during this winter season and I'll see you in the next video bye